I'm Nicola Talent and you can listen to my brand new podcast, Beast, The Murder of Nora Sheehan, streaming now, wherever you get your podcasts. So if you owed me money yeah, and you were just being a bit tight arse, right? <laughs> Right. And I mean, I'd say between you and I, we'd be talking about maybe 20 quid or 50 quid or something like that. So something not really, like that. but it was a bit more than that. I could actually hire Jonathan Gill, the CAB Criminal Assets Bureau target, and the veteran criminal Martin Foley to go knock at your door and to politely ask you to pay me back. Yes. They would take a percentage for their debt collection. Yeah. And we'd all be, well, I'd be happy because yeah. I reckon I'd get my money. But joking aside, this is quite a ridiculous yeah. situation in this country that there seems to be no legislation around this that anybody basically can become and register themselves as a debt collector. Yeah, I mean, if you consider that in July, Martin Foley was convicted. Um, he was convicted of engaging in threatening and abusive behaviour because he hired a guy described in court as a heavy uh, for his firm Viper uh, Debt Recovery to collect the debt. So even after being convicted, mm -hmm. he's still able to do it. Yeah. And that shows you, I mean, it's one thing, like even if you consider if you go to a pub and you have to go past a doorman, that doorman has a register. If he has convictions for violence or whatever, that person isn't allowed to work on the door or if they are convicted, they're kicked off. So that's not the case in this case because um, <clears throat> we've seen this week, uh, published on sundayworld.com, um, Martin Foley and uh, along with Jonathan Gill carrying a clipboard, as far as we're aware, calling to a house looking to collect the debt, all perfectly legal and above board. In one and way. certainly the Guardi are aware of this most definitely. And there has been sort of, you know, conversations even within those the ranks that they have they can do nothing because it's not actually illegal unless they no. commit a crime while doing it. So, you know, there doesn't seem to be a governing body or some sort of protection for people. So literally anybody can go out there and register themselves and go and I just was looking oh we have our calculator because I remember the last time we were talking about this I did a bit of a yeah and I worked out that that uh, debt collection that Foley was involved in that he got the conviction yeah. for he was actually only walking away with about five or six hundred quid from that job yeah, I don't even think it was that much, actually. It was so... It was really small fry money, like. Yeah, it is small fry money. Um, it's, you know, if you're... If you, if somebody owes you uh, 100 grand, Martin Foley probably isn't getting a call from you. Um, so it probably is these small-scale debts. Um, and, yeah... And he's only getting a percentage we, we, yeah, a, of it because, I mean, he's doing the job. Like, but we worked out he had to pay for his expenses for the day, yeah. his petrol or diesel for the van, etc. He's travelling around the country and he's been at this for a long time. He was once in business with Troy Jordan, who was a former associate of, of John Gilligan. Um, they seem to have parted ways, Foley and himself, although they definitely are still, or certainly were in recent times, still friends. But Jonathan Gill, you would wonder what he's doing. Um, in the middle of this and working with Foley and appearing at a house in the Midlands with a clipboard. Um, Jonathan Gill obviously has no major convictions. It no. was a null prosequi entered by, entered by the state in relation to a kidnapping charge that he was up on. Um, but he registered him, himself and this was actually two years ago, would you believe? Two yeah. years ago. Where has that time gone? Because that just feels like yesterday when Jonathan Gill read, registered himself as a mediator. He went up online um, and offered his services to sort of like, you know, get in and mediate in disputes and even sort of, you know, marriages and things like that that had gone awry. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Gill is from the Malahide Road in Dublin. Um, he, in 2011, he there was a tiger kidnapping. Uh, one of these very, very scary incidents where a family were effectively held hostage and a sum of money was demanded. Um, there was a very long-term investigation into it. Uh, Jonathan Gill was charged in connection with this tiger kidnapping, went to court for, it was a very long trial if I remember, and ultimately uh, a null prosequi was entered in terms of the state. However, in the aftermath of him walking away a free man and not guilty, uh, he was served with uh, a bill by the Criminal Assets Bureau. I think the figure reported was something like a quarter of a million. Um, so that's 
at that point, in the aftermath of that, he registered as a mediator. Now, like uh, a, de- a mediation is a, a normal part of mm. society in, in Ireland. There's many mediators. Um, I suppose they are put out as, as an alternative to litigation. Litigation is extremely expensive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if somebody's gone through a divorce or some sort of business dispute, they can hire a mediator to come in and, you know, kind of come to a resolution without going to the high court where a day in the high court costs up to a hundred grand. However, Jonathan Gill, uh, is, is, is he a normal mediator? Well, he certainly has, if you Google his name, Jonathan Gill, you will get, uh, his, the fact that he was targeted by the Criminal Assets Bureau. You will get the, the fact that he was tried, but found not guilty of a tiger kidnapping. Um, so he, he set himself up. Jonathan, I think there was a null prosecutor entered. A null prosecutor, yeah. So, so he wasn't actually tried and found not guilty. This no, no. Different. Yeah, the state dropped the charges against him. Exactly. They? They, they, yeah. they, they, they don't prosecute, I suppose. Yeah. But he says himself, like, I mean, on his website, he, he says he's been negotiating and doing mediations over the last 20 years and that he's very skilled. And he, he, he says that, you know, as part of his testimony, his biog or whatever, yeah. that he often finds that just if people sit down with him mm. and do a coffee, Mm. that they then will come to an agreement in whatever their dispute is. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, well, maybe they will. Because um, I actually rang him up uh, when it first went up mm. and he talked away to me uh, very politely, actually. And he insisted at that point that he wouldn't be forcing anybody to come to an arrangement and that his business is always peaceful. There's never any violence involved in reaching these disputes. And when I asked him about the cab, bill, he accepted that he had to generate income in order to pay this cab bill off. And he said he was trying to turn a negative into a positive and that he did have this debt and he needed to... Earn legitimate money to pay it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and it would be legitimate money. Um, I think the company is called Jonathan Gill and Company Mediation. Um, And for, in that case, he's a registered business owner. He'll file tax returns, he'll file income. And, you know, so that, that, that will be there. So he's kind of doing a little sideline with Foley then? Well, we don't know because we, he, I think some journalists from the organisation tried to contact him and they weren't successful. Um, however, you know, if you do, obviously, as I said, if you do Google Jonathan Gill's name and when I talked to him, he accepted this, that, that he has been in and out of the papers for years, as he said himself. I mean, if you do Google him, there was at one point a, a, a bail hearing and he was described by a, an investigating guard as one of the top criminals in the country. Now, that was only a, a, a preliminary hearing, so there was no findings by any court in relation to that. But there, obviously then, if you live, I think this, the, 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 we had an image of Jonathan Gill holding a clipboard standing next to Martin Foley. And if you open the door to those two, you know, that 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 you know you're going to be. You'd come to the table. You may come to the table, yeah. and this this is this is going on, and um, people are. And some of these disputes, Foley has been sorry, bills that Foley yeah. has gone to collect relate to unpaid rent. Yeah, they relate to kind of you know. A lot of them are are building disputes. Yeah, where they're sort of relatively something up up to you know, 10, 10,000 I was going euros. to say 8,000, yes, yeah. in around the average of what he's chasing, really. Yeah. Um, so a lot of them are... are and like- so he's brought in as opposed to go to the small claims court, which is a lengthier process, even though everybody can go. And- well, you can go to the small claims court for, I think, even less than that. Mm. So you're talking a couple of thousand. I can't remember what it is and it costs very little. But if you want to recover a debt of about 10,000, you'll have to lodge hearings in, in a circuit court or whatever. And, you know, that could take, or a That's high court. maybe that could change in, in some way. Or, I mean, how do you extract a debt from somebody if they just simply don't want to pay? And if they will use the legal system, the slowness of yeah. it to, you know. Frustrate you. Yeah. So you have to go, if, if they don't defend it, you can get a judgment. Then you have to get a, you have to, you know, serve that judgment on them. And then you have to get a share of deceased stuff or whatever. So it's a really, really complicated process. So you can see why people will go And even after different. you get, you might get your, you know, your, an order from the court for the yeah. debt to be paid back. You often hear that people just don't pay it anyway. So you have to go back to court then and try and force them. And then you come into sort of, uh, where their assets are seized in order to pay it, which yeah. is another big lengthy process. So maybe there is a room for this debt collection agencies. There is a room, right? Um, just like there's a room for bouncers. Yeah. Like you need a bouncer in a pub, do you? 
you do like a few well, the trouble, yeah. Pub you go to, but <laughs> well, I don't go to anywhere. I don't else, think you know. any. But what I mean is like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Oh my but, goodness! But what I mean me. is, like, but like you know, so you do need maybe a doorman to keep security. Yeah. But if you're gonna hire somebody who's been, uh, as Martin Foley has been described as, you know, one of the more notorious criminals yeah. in 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 Irish, in the history of Irish state, then. The pubs aren't allowed to do that for the obvious reason. Yeah. So it's whether these sort of these but things. Are they not are, allowed to do it by their own regulatory authority, by the security industry who have certain standards that have to be met? But they have, they're, yeah, they're, they're a body that's. They're that's, a body, but that you don't have to hire people approved by their body. You can hire people outside it as well. You know what I mean? You can you can hire security staff that are approved and get the stamp of approval yeah. by the, the, the security body. Or you can just go. And there's do it, nothing do it stopping casually. you doing it casually, but it's kind of seen as being better practice to. Yeah, hire but the you ones see, this this are, this is what it is. So I mean, like all of these things, like there has to be regulation in society. Mm. Um, like Martin Foley has been involved in a number of very controversial debt collections, and not least um, in in July when he was convicted in relation to 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 somebody. Uh, one uh, person who was working for him at the time described as a heavy going down and threatening to tri- to slit somebody's throat. Mm. So you can't have these types of things going on in But you'd society. almost need, as regards debt collection, I think you'd probably need a legislation of some sort to say that, you know, convicted criminals are people with exactly. certain offences that have reached circuit court level exactly. or whatever it is, literally you know, it's illegal for them to be involved in debt collection, I mean, as opposed to leaving it to some sort of a voluntary a, voluntary a, registration. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it, the taxi situation is similar, isn't it? There's certain mm. people can't have drive taxis by yeah. law. For example, people convicted of sexual crimes are not allowed to become taxi drivers. So, I mean, it surely would make sense for something something similar to exist. For, it surely for would, collection. and especially when you when you see when you see the image of the two of them you know, that it was snapped obviously on a phone, but it clearly shows the two arriving at a door. I mean, let's talk about Foley because he's probably easier for us to talk about. Yeah. Uh, former member of the general Martin Cahill's gang. Um, convictions wise? I think he has something like 40 convictions. Yeah. Um, he's 71 years of age now. 71 years of age. I mean, he, he's he's a veteran uh, criminal, a veteran... Uh, Survivor. Veteran survivor being shot a number of times. Is it 13 times, I think? But something it's something like, like 13 bullets 13 maybe bullets, in his body yes. supposed to be that he's carrying. I think that's sort of like a little bit exaggerated <laughs> maybe just for the tough yeah, man yeah. image. But yeah. he has survived a number of serious assassination yeah. attempts. He survived a kidnapping by the IRA. Yeah, he was kidnapped by the IRA. And it, I, probably that was the, his first real brush with death. He was kidnapped in 1984. At the time, there was disputes going on uh, between Martin Cahill's gang and the IRA. Um, there was some, uh, the, the the Cahill gang were being blamed for drug dealing basically in, in the south inner city. Um, a concerned parents group had, had, had accused them. They had set up a rival group, Concerned Criminals. Uh, was it called Concerned Criminals? You remember it anyway? Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, the, these tensions escalated and Martin Foley was kidnapped by the IRA who broke into his house, uh, bundled him into the back of a van. As a, But as they were driving away, a witness had, had saw what was happening. Um, the guards had ultimately stopped the van. There was a shootout and Foley ultimately escaped with his life. Um, then Foley was, again, he was targeted by the Gilligan gang in... Um, 1995, he was shot outside Fatima Mansions. Again, it was another dispute involving rumours of drugs, uh, IRA involvement, and it was believed the Gilligan gang had shot him. And then in September 2000, he was shot outside Terenure College again. I think he was going swimming there. Mm. And he survived another probably most serious assassination attempt in 2008. And at that point, he'd he'd, um, fallen out with the the Kinahan cartel, um, we believe at the time that that was being ordered from the very top of the the Kinahan cartel, probably by by Christy Kinahan Senior or or um, one of his associates. Um, Foley was shot. Really lucky to escape with his life. It was believed it was carried out by the the fat. Freddy organization on behalf it's of actually the at one point said that the gunman in that yeah. case was James Quinn, who was actually Foley's 
nephew. Yeah. James Quinn is serving a sentence in Spain for the murder of Gary Hutch. Yeah. He was uh, living in Spain for a long time as Daniel Kinahan's personal hitman. He was working on, um, you know, a retainer situation where he had a certain wage from the Kinahans, which allowed him to have his own, you know, luxury apartment. He had a yacht down uh, docked in Porta Banus and um, there was you know, the usual Rolex watches, all those trappings. And he was paid additional sort of bonuses whenever there was a hit to be carried out. Yeah. That was his job, basically. But he was understood to be the guy that maybe had was the hitman in the Carlisle gym yeah. assassination attempt on Foley, his own nephew. Yeah. Which would maybe, you know, explain how he got so close to him because Foley is a clever, wily criminal. Yeah. He's somebody who has kept himself super fit. Even at 71, you can see... The guy has muscles. He yeah. is obviously working out, um, pumping weights, presumably, plus swimming and running and whatever else he does. It's always said to be his fitness that was the reason he survived these yeah. uh, shootings. Though I've always been sceptical about that. I've always Why? wondered. Well, I don't know. Like it was, I remember he seeing a couple of headlines, basically the, he was so muscular, the bullets bounced off him. But I think well, there I was a... About, I, do, I think there's something, I don't know. Like, well, I, mean, I don't have scientific evidence of this, but I have heard, yeah. um, you know, around that sort of ether that yeah. the more muscle mass you have, the more likely the bullet I'll is look, to stop course. in the muscle and not hit an organ. And that's why a lot of those guys that are kind of really, yeah. you know, super pumped up, often they survive because the bullet doesn't go through one of the one of the vital organs in the body. But I think that last hit attempt definitely brought to an end his Foley's career as a really top level crim- yeah. criminal. I think at that point, Kinney and Cartel were so all powerful Mm-hmm. Uh, Foley was basically lucky to survive. And what was the fallout over? Did they accuse him of well, there was a dis- or something? There, there was a dispute involved, uh, meant to be involving drugs, you know, money, um, money and drugs, yeah. basically. As always. As always. Um, and at that point, I think we did hear ultimately that some sort of peace deal had been agreed. But Foley then kind of disappeared from the criminal underworld, but re-emerged as this debt collector. Yeah. And we went through a period where you'd get a, a sort of phone call or a, a, every week. Help really. call usually from Yeah, people. yeah. From people that, that yeah. a lot of them around the country, like, mm. you know. It, yeah, he was mostly, doing a lot of work around rural Ireland rather than. Yeah. And as you said, for relatively, it actually, a lot of it seemed to kick off uh, in sort of post-Celtic Tiger, where there was a lot of sort of subcontractors went bust or had yeah. problems either either getting paid themselves or or mm-hmm. finishing jobs or whatever. And he seemed to make a lot of, uh, you know, that seemed to be what what, what he was well, doing. He found, he found a, a, a legitimate, a legitimate uh, source of income in it because, of course, Foley, despite his age, um, has dependents and um, he's never left Crumlin. No. Where he, he grew up and where he started his criminal career. Um but also, it's phenomenal. Where does he go next? Like at 71, at what stage does he consider retiring? Well, I don't think, he, you know, he can because there was a very lengthy, there was a cab judgment served on, on Martin Foley. Um, the last time I made an inquiry, he hadn't paid that bill. He hadn't paid that bill because it, he... So it's something like 700,000 or 600,000. Yeah, you know, something of 738,000, I think. Yeah. And what happened was he... His brain he, on you. Well, I wrote it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, what happened was he he fought it to the Supreme Court, didn't he? And yeah. there was there was a very long running dispute, and ultimately he he got whatever the, his original bill he got served with interest on top of the bill, yeah, and it escalated him massively. So is he in a position that he just feels that he's never going to be in a position to pay that, so he just ignores it? Well, I don't know. I mean, we I don't know. I suppose they can. Do you know, like if, if you owed pers- say two million, mm. what would you do? You could do. You could well, you do can declare, yeah, you actually. can declare yourself bankrupt or whatever. And, yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's so that's hanging over mm. his head. So maybe retirement is not an option. No, and I would think the money that they are making on a thing like that is small fry. It's maybe keeping you in. I mean, if you were paying tax on it, on top of that, if you were five hundred quid for your day's work, isn't brilliant by the time you pay your tax and no your expenses and all the rest. But there's very little left. Um, so anyway, um, well, look, we'll leave it at that. I do think that probably we're going to see calls now for some sort of legislation to be brought in around this. Um, I don't believe it's right to have a situation that these two guys could knock on your door 
looking to collect money. There has to be different ways around this or certainly more... Um, oversight. I mean, there's well, all yeah, of these sure. things need oversight, you yeah. know. And of course, there should be legitimate ways for people to 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 look to seek to seek repayments of debts mm. outside of the legal system. There has to be some middle ground between yeah. that lengthy court process and, you know, this kind yeah. of thing. So, um, right. Well, look, I won't send the lads onto your doorstep. <laughs> for my... I'll give you another couple oh, of weeks to pay me back that money you owe me. Thank you, Nicola. All right. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.